So we're going to continue our uh, discussions and we're going to talk about uh, market efficiency. So market efficiency um, has to do with how efficient the markets are as, as uh, far as the information is concerned. So in this chapter, in this uh, presentation, we will talk about uh, uh, these few things that are written on your agenda. Uh, so what is an efficient market? Assumptions of an efficient market. Uh, the hypothesis, the efficient market hypothesis, forms of market efficiency, some of the implications, and some um, uh, major exceptions to the hypothesis. So what is an efficient market? An efficient market is a market in which prices of all investments quickly and fully reflect all available information. See, what happens is companies are providing different types of information to the public, to the, through the media, at different stages of their uh, uh, life. So as a month finishes, they may provide some monthly information. As a quarter finishes, they may provide some quarterly information. And as the year finishes, they s sometimes, or they mostly provide an annual information called an annual report. So all of these, th these different pieces of information, plus any ad hoc information, meaning information that just comes out for uh, 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 from, from the company, such as changing of the president or uh, any um, uh, fraud charges that were laid on certain people or, or the company or any lawsuits that have been filed against or by the company, things of that nature, uh, change the price of the stocks in the market. All of these non-financial reasons also have an impact on the price of the stock. So as they do, the market absorbs th that information and the price reflects that new information. If the market fully reflects all the available information, we call that market an efficient market. So all available information includes the past info, uh, current info, and some of the forthcoming events, such, a, such as changing the president if that's happening in three months time or so on. It also includes info that can be reasonably inferred. So if the economy is going down, uh, then you can reasonably infer that some of the company's prices or incomes would be going down. That means that their stock price would go down as well. So all of those are reasonable inferences based on the information that is out there. This is called the efficient market hypothesis. So this hypothesis represents the fact that the stock markets are efficient with the prices of stocks reflecting their true economic value. So they have an economic value uh, that they are reflecting at. So when oftentimes people ask, um, why is Google priced at this, at this uh, uh, value? Why is uh, Apple priced at this value? There are reasons behind that. And the best way to explain it is the efficient market hypothesis. So the market can be expected to be efficient because of the following uh, reasons or information. So you have price takers, you have one participant alone, uh, basically you have all these assumptions coming into it or some of these uh, in information. So you have uh, the fact that, that, one, that one participant alone cannot affect the price of the stock. So there are several price takers. You do not have one person who dictates the price of the stock. Information is costless and widely available to market participants at the same time. So all the information that the company gives out is available to anyone who, who so chooses to research or search for it. Information, information is generated in a random fashion such that announcements are independent of each other. So companies don't stand out there and time their, their uh, uh, information or announcements, they are as they happen. There is no order to it. Investors react quickly and fully to the new information, causing the stock prices to adjust according to the information that just came out. So these are assumptions of the efficient market hypothesis. Of course, we know that some of these uh, assumptions may not necessarily be true. For example, uh, the information that is the assumption that it says number three that information is generated in a random fashion, uh, it may not be. Some companies may time it according to their, um, uh, their best understanding. 
So maybe uh, if they would like to announce that their president is being changed or their head office is being relocated, they may announce it with their annual report, which um, has all, a lot of positive information. There are three forms of market efficiency. We have the weak form, we have the semi-strong form, and we have the strong form. So the weak form dictates that the EMH uh, basically reflects only price history and information on volume. So this is past data. So basically, when you, when you are looking at prices for your project, for different stocks, you, would, you may notice that there are graphs and price history uh, for each stock. So this, in the weak form, those are the only pieces of information that is reflected in the current stock price, the trends and the past information. In the semi-strong form, you have all the past info plus all the publicly available information. So all of that information is now reflected in the stock price. And in the strong form, we have public and private information which is being reflected in the stock price. First of all, you have to assume that all public and private information about a company is available to everyone and that all of that information is actually being reflected in the stock price. So uh, most experts tend to think that Canadian and US and, and the other uh, G20 stock markets are somewhere between semi-strong and strong. Uh, there is no hypothesis that says that we're all in the strong form of uh, hypo uh, strong form of uh, uh, EMH. Uh, everyone states that they are somewhere in the middle of semi-strong and strong. However, some state that we're more in the strong, and the other state that we're more towards the semi-strong. Uh, <clears throat> the discussion should uh, be uh, on the fact that most companies do provide information. Some uh, may not provide all the private information uh, and that is their right. However, as it needs to become public, they do provide it. So most prices are reflecting all the information that is out there and most stock prices are accurate as far as information is concerned. So what are the implications for money management? Well, there are three implications. First one is diversification. So we've said that a few times prior to today's presentation. Do not put all your eggs in the same basket. So if you're going to invest, you should also diversify in different types of markets. So you should look at the weak form, the semi-strong form, and the strong form of markets and try to see where you can invest. Remember, if you were to invest in weak form of market, a weak form of an EMH, there will be very, uh, there will be a lot of risk because you don't have a lot of the information. So, but at the same time with a lot of risk, there may be some, a lot of reward that comes. So uh, if you're going to invest, invest wisely and perhaps diversify using these three types of markets as well as the other types that you've learned about like industries or, or countries and, uh, and, and interest rates and so on. Portfolio risk. So minimize your risk by spreading your wealth in various efficiency forms which is the same as diversification, but looking at it from a different angle. And then there are fees and costs, higher fees for more reliable and in, uh, relevant information. So this is an obvious conclusion as well. So you've got to pay more for better information in this, in this world. Now there are certain exceptions to EMH. Um, you have these five exceptions listed. We will not go over all five of them. Uh, you can easily research them using the readings or the, uh, the valuable tool called the internet. Uh, so you have persistence in stock returns, you've got the unexpected company earnings, you've got value stocks, you've got the size effect, and you have the January effect. So I'll, I'll just talk about briefly about uh, the last two. The size effect pretty much says that the larger the company, the more information will be available. So if you have more information available, the chances are that you are in a stronger form of the market efficiency. Um, the January effect states that after December, after everyone has enjoyed their holidays, a lot of people need to pay up their bills. And what happens is when they're paying up their bills, the companies 
uh, stock prices tend to go down for two reasons. Number one, their sales go down because the shopping season is over. And secondly, a lot of people may need to sell their stocks in order to pay for the bills that they've just incurred. So when they are selling, there are more sellers than there are buyers, so the stock price tends to go down. So this is an exception to the market efficiency because markets may be efficient, but because of January, it just happens. It is not very predominant. You don't see a huge blip. You see a minor blip, um, and you tend to see those minor blips in developed nations where uh, this, the uh, holidays are more celebrated in December. So um, that is this presentation that wraps up market efficiency. Hopefully uh, you have an understanding of the three forms of market efficiency, and you can, you can uh, uh, look at your assignment from this angle as well. Thank you very much.